So in electrochemistry, we are going to learn about galvanic cells. Galvanic cells are also called as electrochemical cells. And uh, electrochemical cells, what does it really do is, chemical energy is get, gets converted into electrical energy. Or I can say that electrical energy is produced as a result of a chemical reaction. Let's understand how an electrochemical cell works. The diagram given over there gives you a rough sketch of uh, an electrochemical cell. On the left hand side, you have a uh, zinc electrode dipped in zinc sulfate solution. Zinc sulfate, because of a soluble salt, it exists as zinc ions and sulfate ions. On the right hand side, I have the copper electrode, the red one, dipped into a blue solution of copper sulfate, which exists as copper ions and sulfate ions. So once you connect the two electrodes, we find the following thing to take place. Number one, the size of zinc electrode decreases. Number two, size of copper electrode increases. And we also find the color of the copper sulfate solution gets lighter. And also, there is a movement of two, if we uh, connect a meter to the, in the, between the two electrodes, I can see that the movement of two electrons from the zinc electrode to the copper electrode. So we need to explain why all these things take place. So at the zinc electrode, let's go to the left hand side, at the side where the zinc electrode is there, we find that the zinc, since the two electrons are traveling from zinc electrode to copper electrode, the zinc uh, reacts, uh, zinc becomes zinc ions and two electrons. And since this is a process in which two electrons are given away or loss of electrons, we call this as oxidation. And any electrode where oxidation takes place, we call it as anode. Now, uh, the two electrons from the zinc side goes to the copper side and reacts with the copper ions in the solution and we get copper metal. And this copper metal goes and deposits onto the copper uh, electrode. So this explains why the size of zinc electrode decreases and why the size of copper electrode increases. And the color of copper sulfate gets lighter because we remove the copper ions from solution. And if you look at the equation that takes place here, copper ions are accepting two electrons, therefore this is gain of electrons, hence we call this as reduction. And always the electrode at which reduction takes place, we call it as the cathode. And further, this is a galvanic cell. You can see that because of a chemical reaction, there some kind of electricity is produced. And that's why we also call it as an electrochemical cell. And... Uh, you will be learning about other kind of cells also later, but an important point to be noted over here is, in this case, the electrode at which oxidation takes place, that is the anode, is a negative electrode because the electrons are produced there and the electrode at which reduction takes place is called as the cathode and it is the positive electrode. As far as the diagram is concerned, we have explained everything which is there except the a term which is written as salt bridge. We will go further and see what is a salt bridge and why is it necessary. So let's understand why the salt bridge is there and what is the purpose of it in an electrochemical cell. Salt bridges are usually made of uh, soluble salts. We can use potassium nitrate, potassium chloride, sodium nitrate and sodium chloride. So the purpose of the salt bridge is Consider the left hand side, the zinc electrode is zinc sulfate. You know the reaction that takes place there is zinc giving you zinc ions and two electrons. So what's happening here is the electrons move to the copper electrode, but we get because of the dissolving of the zinc electrode, zinc ions in solution. Or we are having an excess of positive charge. An electrical neutrality has to be always maintained. That is the reason the nitrate ion of the salt bridge uh, which the, the potassium nitrate being a completely soluble salt will have the nitrate ion will migrate towards the anode. Similarly, if you go to the cathode side, the copper ions gets removed from the solution and therefore there will be an increase in negative charge. So in order to balance the increased negative charge, the potassium ions move towards the cathode. So basically, a salt bridge balances the charge and maintains electrical neutrality in an electrochemical cell.
and also it completes the inner circuit as you can see it from the diagram. So this is the way we always represent an electrochemical cell but we should have an easier way to represent so we call something called as a cell notation in which the anode and the cathodes are written. So what we do is the anode is written as zinc giving you zinc 2 plus and the cathode is written as copper 2 plus giving you copper. We call this as a cell notation which is separated by two vertical lines in the middle and the individual half cells are uh, separated by a single cell. The one written on the left hand side is always the anode, one written on the right hand side is always the cathode. And in the anode, as we know that zinc is oxidized to zinc 2 plus and in the cathode, copper ion is reduced to copper. So this is the easier way of representing a cell. But still we have an answer to the question, why electrons move from zinc to copper electrode and not the other way. So we will proceed further to the next video, understand why the movement of electron is from zinc to copper and not from copper to zinc.